Electricity is a part of our daily lives. Many of the activities we do every day depend on electricity. The discovery of electricity change people's lives. Can you watch your favorite show on TV without electricity? Can you use your computers without electricity? Imagine our life today without electricity. You have been learning a lot about electricity from grade 3 to grade 7. You have learned about its sources and uses, what materials make good conductors of electricity, what makes up an electric current, and how electrical energy is transferred or transformed in other forms of energy. In this video lesson, you will learn more about electricity. Electricity is the flow of electrons from one place to another. Electrons can flow through any material but does so more easily in some than in others. Conductors are materials wherein electrons flow easily because of its low resistance. A conductor is an object or type of material that allows the flow of charge or electrical current in one or more directions. Materials made of metal are common electrical conductors. Semiconductors are materials which have a conductivity between conductors and non-conductors or insulators. Semiconductors can be pure elements such as silicon or germanium or compounds such as gallium arsenide and cadmium selenide. Semiconductors are materials wherein electrons can be made to flow under certain circumstances. Insulators are materials in which the electron does not flow freely or the atom of the insulator have tightly bound electrons whose internal electric charges do not flow freely. These are materials wherein electrons flow with great difficulty because of its high resistance. Well, let us proceed with the Ohm's law. Ohm's law for the electric circuit is the foundation of electric circuit analysis and is of fundamental importance. The various relations of Ohm's law are easily learned and are readily applied to practical situations. These relations and their application are used for understanding electric circuit. Ohm's law is a law stating that electric current is proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. At this point, let's take a look at this picture. So he is George Simon Ohm, which is a German physicist, son of a locksmith and gunsmith, which was born in Erlangen, Bavaria on March 16, 1787. As a high school teacher, Ohm started his research with the recently invented electrochemical cell invented by Italian Count Alessandro Volta. Using equipment of his own creation, he was able to show that the current that flows through a wire is proportional to its cross-sectional area and is inversely proportional to its length. Unfortunately, when Ohm published his findings, his ideas were dismissed by his colleagues. At this point, let's talk about current. Current is a flow of electric charge through the conductor. In electric circuits, these charges are often carried by moving electrons in a wire. It is the measure of how fast electrons are moving in a circuit expressed in amperes. 
written as capital letter A or A and P. The conducting material consists a large number of free electrons which move from one atom to the other at random. Next is voltage. Voltage is similar to pressure. It is the amount of force exerted on a unit area. Voltage is the pressure from an electrical circuit's power source that pushed charge electrons or current through a conducting loop enabling them to do work such as illuminating a light. Voltage is the measure of the amount of work done on a unit charge expressed in volts, written as capital letter V. Next is resistance. Resistance is described as what impedes or opposes the flow of electric current. It is a measure of the opposition to current flow in an electrical circuit. It varies along the wire or various loads in a circuit. It is measured in ohms using this symbol. Again, Ohm's law is a law stating that electric current is proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. We will use the formula V or voltage is equal to current multiplied by resistance. So we will use this formula in computing for different quantities involving voltage, current, and resistance. The symbol for current is capital letter I. Its unit of measurement is ampere and the abbreviation is capital letter A. For voltage, the symbol is capital letter E or capital letter V. Its unit of measurement is volt written as capital letter V. For resistance, the symbol is R and its unit is ohm. Let us have a sample problem. A cordless flat iron having a resistance of 18 ohms is connected to a 220 volt line. How much current is flowing through it? So, in computing word problems, we will use the mnemonics GAPSA, given what is asked, formula, solution, then answer. For this word problem, are given are the following. For the resistance, we have 18 ohms. For the voltage, we have 220 volts. The formula that we will use in computing for the current, we have current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. For our solution, we will replace the formula with the given, our resistance or our voltage is 220 volts, then we have 18 ohms for the resistance, that is, 220 volts divided by 18 ohms, we have 12.2 amperes, 220 divided by 18 is 12.2, and uh, since we are computing for the current, the unit that we will use for, your, for our answer is amperes. Next sample problem. An electric fan has a resistance of 3 kilo ohms. So we have here small letter K and the symbol of ohm. So we will read it as kilo ohms. And a voltage rating of 220 volts. What is the current needed to operate the electric fan? So, the given on this problem are the following. The resistance is 3 kilo ohms. That is equivalent to 3,000 ohms. Why 3,000 ohms? Because 1 kilo ohms is equivalent to 1,000 ohms. For the voltage, we have 220 volts. What is asked? We will be computing for the current. The formula, again, the formula that we will use is Current is equal to voltage or volts divided by resistance. For our solution, so we have 220 volts divided by 
3,000 ohms or 3 kilo ohms? Our answer is 0 0.073 amperes. So again, we have uh, 3 kilo ohms or 3,000 ohms for our given resistance. 220 volts for the voltage. Then we divide voltage and resistance. That is 220 volts divided by 3,000 ohms. That is why our final answer is 0 0.073 amperes. So the current needed to operate the electric fan is 0 0.073 amperes. Next problem is a DVD player with a resistance of 40 ohms has a current of 0.1 amperes flowing through it. So as you can see, at this point, the current is already given, same as the resistance. So that means we will calculate the amount of voltage applied to the DVD player. So again, we will follow the mnemonics GAPSA are given are the following. The resistance is 40 ohms while the current is 0 0.1 amperes. The formula that we will use is voltage is equal to current multiplied by resistance or resistance multiplied by current. So we will replace the formula with the given. Our given current is 0 0.1 amperes and the resistance is 40 ohms so you have 0 0.1 amperes multiplied by 40 ohms so your answer is 4 volts so the voltage supplied to the DVD player is 4 volts let us have another problem for voltage a traffic light has a total resistance of 22,000 ohms and requires 0.1 amperes of current to operate. What is the voltage required to operate the traffic light? Our given problem is uh, the resistance is 22,000 ohms. The current flowing is 0.01 amperes. What is asked? Of course, we have to compute for the voltage. The formula that we will use is, again, voltage is equal to current multiplied by resistance. So we have the resistance is 22,000 ohms while the current is 0 0.01 amperes. So you have 0 0.01 multiplied by 22,000. So you have 220 volts. And uh, finally, let us compute for... Uh, a sample problem about resistance. A multi-cab starter motor has a current of 60 amperes and a voltage of 12 volts. What is the resistance of the starter motor? We will use again the mnemonics GAPSA. The given voltage is 12 volts and the current is 60 amperes. The formula that we will use is resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. We will replace it with the given. So you have 12 volts divided by 60 amperes. So your answer would be 0 0.2 ohms. And for the last sample problem, what resistance opposes the flow of 0 0.7 amperes in a 15 volt battery given the voltage is 15 volts the current is 0 0.7 amperes the formula that we will use is resistance is equal to voltage divided by current for the solution we have 15 volts divided by 0 0.7 amperes the answer would be 21.43 ohms so let us remember the following statements or the statements below for the current and resistance 
The current decreases as the resistance increases or when the resistance increases, the current decreases. The current increases as the resistance decreases or when the resistance decreases, the current increases. It is because current and resistance are inversely proportional. Whereas for current and voltage, the current decreases as the resistance increases or when the resistance increases, the current decreases. For a constant load, or let's say for one bulb, when the voltage increases, the current also increases. So if you add battery, or let's say for example, the current will increase. Let us check your understanding. Number one, which of the following is the unit of current? A volt, B ohm, C ampere, D charge. Okay, for number one, the answer is letter C, ampere. Number two, what will happen to the current through a circuit if the resistance is decreased? A decreases, B increases, C remains the same, D loses. Okay, please write your answer. Okay, for number two, the answer is increases. So, if the resistance is decreased, the current will increase since they are inversely proportional. For number three, which of the following opposes the flow of electric current? A. Voltage B. Resistance C. Capacitor D. Ampere Okay, for number 3, what is your answer? Okay, if your answer is letter B, Resistance, then your answer is correct. Number 4 what is the voltage across a 6 ohms load when 3 amperes of current passes through it? A. 1.8 volts B. 18 volts C. 180 volts Letter D. 1,800 volts Okay, take your time. So you have to compute. So, do not forget the formula. If you are computing for the voltage, you have to multiply current and resistance. If you are computing for current, divide voltage and resistance. While if you are computing for resistance, that is voltage divided by current. Alright, what is your answer? So, since we are computing for the voltage, the formula that we will use is current multiplied by resistance. So, we have 6 ohms and the 3 amperes. If we are going to multiply these two, then the answer would be 18 volts. Number 5. What is the electric current if a circuit has a resistance of 100 ohms and a voltage of 6 volts? A. 0 0.06 amperes B. 0 0.6 amperes C. 6 amperes Letter D. 60 amperes So since you are computing for the current, so you have to divide voltage and resistance all right for number five the answer is letter a 0 0.06 amperes and for number six what is the resistance opposes the flow of current of 0 0.75 amperes in a 12 volts battery a 0 0.16 ohms B 1.6 ohms C 16 ohms letter D 160 ohms 
So this time you will be computing for the resistance. You have the voltage divided by the current. Okay, time's up. For number 6, the answer is 16 ohms. Why 16 ohms? Because you have to divide 12 volts with 0.75 amperes. So that would be all for this episode. Thank you for watching this video lesson. Thank you.